for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Ed Groen, Johnny. Busy? No, I just finished the case. How can I help you? I'd like you to fly to California. Palma, California. Investigate the death of a woman who was reported to have perished in a fire. Uh, Sarah Deering. Sarah Deering? That name has a familiar ring. The silent movie star. Oh, yeah. Well, she retired in the 20s, didn't she? At the peak of her career. Our company carries a $100,000 policy on her life. And there's a rumor in Palma that Sarah Deering's death was not due to the fire. Oh, yeah? We got the tip from a news item in the local paper, the Palma News. Who benefits by her death? Her estate. We have no way of learning who she appointed as executor of her estate or who the beneficiaries might be. But a claim for the 100000 will undoubtedly reach us before long. Meanwhile, I'm to investigate this rumor? Yeah. I'll send you our file on Sarah Deering and the newspaper item that gave us the tip. <laughs> You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the Presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? During his 50 years of public service, he held almost every office the public could give him. He was born in Virginia in 1758, and at the age of 18, when he left college to enter the Army, his cabinet boasted the names of such distinguished Americans as John Quincy Adams and John C. Calhoun. When he was re-elected in 1820, he carried every state in the Union and won every electoral vote except one which was cast for John Quincy Adams. If you don't have his name by now, here are two more clues. During his presidency, the first public high school was started and the first steamship crossed the Atlantic. Who was he? James Monroe, fifth president of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Federal Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Sarah Deering matter. Expense account item one. $153, $153, plane fare and incidentals from Hartford to International Airport, Inglewood, California. I rented a convertible and drove to Palma, a little village perched high in the Santa Rosa Mountains, overlooking a thousand square miles of Mojave Desert. I registered at the town's only hotel, then dropped around the offices of the Palma News. Oh, hello. Can I help you? I'm looking for the editor, uh, Lacey, M. Lacey. I'm Lacey, Maggie Lacey. The editor? The editor. You're kidding. I wish you salesmen would think of a new approach. I'm just a little weary excusing the fact that I'm not a grizzled old character who drinks ink in his coffee. Miss Lacey. And I've got all the printing supplies I need. I'm sorry. Perhaps the next time you pass through. I'm here to talk about a news item, Miss Lacey. Which item? This one. Well, what about it? Well, it says that there are some rather peculiar circumstances, uh, quote, surrounding the recent death of Palmer's most famous citizen, Miss Sarah Deering. These circumstances were discovered by the Palmer News and brought to the attention of Dan Cox, county sheriff. As of this writing, Sheriff Cox has chosen to ignore the evidence submitted by the news. Why? Unquote. You write that? Yes. And uh, you submitted the evidence to Sheriff Cox? Yes, I did. What sort of evidence, Miss Lacey? Now, I'm not sure that's any of your business, Mr. Dollar. Johnny Dollar. My credentials. Oh, an insurance investigator. For federal life. They insured Sarah Deary? For $100,000. Who's the beneficiary, Mr. Dollar? Her estate. The executor hasn't contacted my company as yet. In fact, we don't know who he is or where to reach him. Hmm. 100000 you said. Just waiting to be claimed. Well, that would explain why she was killed. What did you say? Sarah Deering was murdered, Mr. Dollar. I'm almost positive on it. You better explain, Miss Lacey. Well, as you know, Sarah Deering was burned to death in her bed. At least that's what the county coroner certified. Accidental death due to fire of unknown origin. But you disagree. And I'll show you why. I found this in the ruins of her bedroom. A medicine bottle. Mm-hmm. The label was burnt off. What's this stuff caked in the bottom? 
Well, Pete, the local pharmacist analyzed it for me. It's what's left of a very powerful sedative. Is this the evidence you submitted to the sheriff? Mm Mm-hmm. And he said it wasn't anything to be concerned about. Now, listen, Mr. Dollar. The stuff in this bottle can only be purchased by prescription. And it wasn't purchased here in Palmer. So? So I think those two men brought it. I think they drugged Sarah Deering and then rigged up some kind of contraption that would start a fire in her bedroom after they got out of town. Hey, hold on. You left me with two men. What two men? The ones who come to see Sarah Deering every year on the same day. Who are they? Nobody seems to know. They usually come together on the noon bus and leave town on the 620. I took a photograph of them last year. Plan to do a story on them someday, you know, from the angle of mysterious admirers make yearly pilgrimage to see ex-movie queen. There it is. Oh. And these men appeared on the day of her death. Mm-hmm. They left on the 620, and the fire was discovered at 8. Any idea where they come from? Hollywood. I checked with the bus driver. Hmm. You've done a very thorough job, Miss Lacey. Sarah Deering has been my idol ever since I was old enough to dream. I read everything ever written about her. She's a wonderful woman. Yeah, so I've heard. I understand she was a recluse. <laughs> what woman wouldn't be after the heartbreak she's had? You know, she died broke, Mr. Dollar. Except for the insurance policy. Did she owe anyone? No. No, there was just enough left in her bank account to pay her a few debts and Hilda's wages. Who's Hilda? Hilda Brower, her personal maid. Been with her ever since she started in pictures. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for your help, Miss Lacey. I'll keep in touch. I found County Sheriff Dan Cox seated behind a well-ordered desk in his well-ordered office. He listened carefully while I explained the purpose of my call. And when I finished, he wagged his massive shock of silver-white hair. Oh, Mr. Dollar, I'm afraid your company has been misled by an overzealous newspaper woman. Sarah Deering's death was accidental. What about the sedatives found in her room, Sheriff? Maggie Lacey claims they were prescription drugs not purchased here in Palmer. Then Miss Deering must have purchased them elsewhere. A recluse who hadn't been off her estate for 20 years? Hilda Brower, her maid, went lots of places for Miss Deering. Uh-huh. How about the two men who called on her the day of her death? Old friends, Mr. Dollar, came to see Miss Deering every year on her birthday. You know them, Sheriff? Yes. You care to give me their names? I would care, Mr. Dollar. They were friends of a very fine lady. I know she wouldn't want them to be annoyed because of some foolish rumors about her death. You seem very certain that it was accidental. It couldn't have been anything else. Sarah Deering didn't have an enemy in the world. I get the impression that you knew her rather well. We were close friends, Mr. Dollar. I see. Sheriff, did you consider the possibility of suicide? Impossible. A woman who enjoyed living as much as she did doesn't take her own life. Yet she shut herself away from the world. And why not? Her fame had brought her most of what the world had to offer. She preferred solitude. Was she in good health, Sheriff? Sarah Deering was always in delicate health, though she'd never admit it, especially to herself. I see. Was there an autopsy? The county coroner felt the circumstances didn't warrant an autopsy. And you agreed? Naturally, Mr. Dollar. I happen to be sheriff and county coroner. I drove to the outskirts of town and located Sarah Deering's rambling Spanish villa, where I found Hilda Brower, an enormous, tearful woman. (laughs) It was my evening out, same as every Thursday, Mr. Dollar. I go to early movie. I'm home at eight. I smell smoke. It comes from her bedroom. There's fire. I try to reach her, but the flames... It's all right, (laughs) You did what you could, I'm sure. Excuse me, please. I'm... I am not myself, you understand? Of course. Hilda, who were the two men who visited Miss Deering that day? Two men? The ones who came every year on her birthday. I do not know any men. Now, Hilda, I know you're upset. I cannot tell you any more. I don't know any more. You know their names, Hilda. What are they? I cannot say any more. Please, go away now. Now, look, Hilda. You all at best leave, Mr. Dollar. Oh. Wow. Sheriff Cox. Hilda can't tell you any more than I've already told you. Case is closed. Why persist in stirring up ugly rumors? I've got a job to do, Sheriff. You've done it. Now, why not leave us in peace? I'll be going when I'm satisfied. That's your privilege, sir. Meanwhile, don't trespass on this property again. Just as you say, Sheriff. 
Goodbye. Sheriff Cox didn't bother to see me out, so I had a chance to pause in Sarah Deering's living room and study some photographs which had caught my eye earlier. There were four of them, all enshrined in gold frames, all of the same handsome young man. The face was weak-mouthed, without character, and vaguely familiar. So soon? Any luck? I don't know yet, Miss Macy. May I see the photograph of those mysterious visitors you showed me before? Oh, of course. Here you are. Ah. Have you got a lead, Mr. Dollar? Ah, I think so. You see this man? The tall one? Mm-hmm. Well, there are four photos of him in Sarah Deering's living room. Were they autographed? No. But they were framed in enough gold to indicate he must have held a very special place in her life. Of course, he's a lot older in this photograph. How about his pudgy little companion here? Well, apparently he didn't rate enshrinement. Only the tall one made the Hall of Fame. I who he is. Miss Lacey, are you absolutely positive these two men visited Sarah during the day she died? Oh, yes, absolutely. Thanks. I'll borrow this photo, if you don't mind. Be back tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Dollar, Johnny, wait. Yeah? Where are you going in such a ladder? To the Hollywood Public Library to find a name for this space. If you think the person in this photograph was an actor, Mr. Dollar, his picture and name will undoubtedly be cataloged in the player's directory or prior to 1937, the standard casting directory. Well, fine. However, unless you know approximately when he was active, you may be in for a very long search. Oh? A new edition of the directory is published three times a year. Each contains hundreds of performers. I see. Well, dust off the 1923 editions. I'll work my way forward. what seemed to be 400,000 faces later, I found my man in a 1928 edition of the Standard Casting Directory. He was Neville Thomas, represented by an agent named Matty Freeman. A phone call to the Artist Managers Guild disclosed that Freeman had gone out of business 10 years ago. He was now owner of Matty's Steakhouse, an expensive eatery on La Cienega Boulevard, Hollywood's restaurant row. At the bar, I was about to relieve my parched throat when who should approach but the pudgy little man in the photo Maggie Lacey had loaned me. Oh, I'm Matty Freeman. Uh, Edward said you want to see me. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. I uh, didn't catch your name, Mr. Uh... Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Insurance investigator. Uh, what message. can I do for you? Well, I was looking for an actor you used to represent, Neville Thomas. But you'll do fine for now. I don't understand. Uh, this photo give you a hint? Never one me. Taken in Palma last year. What you got this? That's not what I'm here to talk about, Mr. Freeman. Okay, so you've got a photograph. And a witness who saw you and Neville Thomas in Palma a few hours before Sarah Deering died. I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Dowler, and if you'll excuse... Just a minute. What is it? You mean to say that you've never heard of Sarah Deering? was my privilege to be in the business when Sarah Deering was making motion picture history. Well, feeling the way you do, it seems to me you'd be willing to cooperate. How? Explain what you were doing in Palma the day Sarah Deering died. I should explain anything to you. I just thought maybe you'd like to clear yourself. What? Suspicion of Sarah Deering's murder? I'm having a pipe ring, Dollar. Sarah Deering died on a fire. Okay. Then let's move on to Neville Thomas. Where can I find him? I wouldn't know. All right. Have it your way. I'll find Neville Thomas with or without your help. My company can usually get police cooperation. I'll see you, Mr. Freeman. Uh, one second, Dollar. Yeah? Uh, Just what does police cooperation imply? Oh, a statewide alarm for Neville Thomas? Wanted for questioning in connection with the death of Sarah Deering? The sheriff at Palmer certified a death was accidental. The matter's closed. Any matter of murder can always be reopened. It'll be messy, lots of newspaper publicity, but I'm going to find Thomas. See you around. Uh, wait, Dollar. Yeah? 
Devil Thomas is in my office. Mind if I break in here for a moment to say a few words? Just the other day, I was having lunch with a group of newspaper reporters. We were talking about the government and what goes into its operation when a thought struck me. It's a funny thing, I said. They call one branch of the government the State Department when it handles all of our foreign affairs. Can any of you fellows explain that? Well, one of the reporters who writes political news piped up and said, actually, the State Department does more than handle foreign affairs. It also publishes all of the laws that have been passed by Congress and issues all the passports and visas for anyone traveling outside the United States. Well, just then, the waitress brought us our coffee, and she entered the conversation. Don't forget, she said, if you're ever on a quiz show, you can maybe win a trip to the moon by telling them that the State Department has the job of making sure the great seal of the United States doesn't get lost. And it acts sort of like a governmental Emily Post, too. While she was making out our checks, she added this bit of information. Did you ever hear of the Division of Protocol? That's part of the State Department, too. It's the outfit that makes sure foreign diplomats who visit America get introduced the way they should and get seated in the right places at official dinners and things like that. Well, after she gave us all that information, we tipped her and went back to work. And now I think it's time we got back to our program. <laughs> now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Matty Freeman led me back to his office with all the grudging grace of a kid surrendering a stolen apple. The man he introduced as Neville Thomas was still handsome but branded with a bitter, down-at-the-mouth expression. You ask me if I knew Sarah Deering. <laughs> Why, I was her leading man in five pictures, Mr. Dollar. She was a vixen, temperamental, the most exasperating woman in the world. But she had a great gift, Neville. A gift for stealing scenes, yes. When was your last fear, Mr. Thomas? Yes? All right. Excuse me, I'm wanted outside. I know you'll cooperate with Mr. Dollar, Neville. Don't worry, Mary. My ex-agent stole me blind when I was on the top of the heap. I drop around here once in a while to admire the house my money built. Let's get back to Sarah Deering. If you insist. When did you see her last? Not since our last picture. Oh, that's not true. No. You saw her the day she died. <laughs> I'm afraid you're mistaken, Mr. Dollar. You are positively identified. By whom? By someone who's seen you in Palmer every year on Sarah Deering's birthday. <laughs> Fantastic. Take a look at this photograph. Care to reconsider your answer? Only to this extent, Mr. Dollar. I'll admit I did visit Sarah Deering occasionally, as seldom as possible, and only after she besieged me with letters and phone calls. You see, Sarah was in love with me. I had been for many years. Oh. And you? <laughs> I'm afraid I didn't share Mattie's adoration for her, Mr. Dollar. A pity is the nicest word to express my feeling for Sarah. I see. What do you know about the real cause of her death? I read that she died in the fire. Has there been some further development? You were seen leaving her home less than two hours before the fire was discovered. <laughs> Impossible. I can prove I was here in Hollywood at the apartment of a friend. Who? Mattie Freeman. <laughs> It didn't take a mental colossus to deduce that Thomas and his ex-agent had rehearsed their alibi before I ever set foot in the steakhouse. The clincher, if I needed one, came as I pulled out of the parking lot. I spotted Matty talking to someone in a park sedan. The someone obliged by striking a match to his cigar, which revealed that it was Sheriff Dan Cox. Right then, I decided to call it a day. I registered at the plaza, took an aspirin, a hot shower, and a sleeping tablet in that order. Hello, hello. Johnny, I phoned every hotel in town. Thank heavens I finally located you. Well, lucky you. 
lucky you, whoever you are. Maggie Lacey, Johnny. I've got to see you right away. Proof for Maggie. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'll drive down first thing tomorrow. I'm not phoning from Palmer, Johnny. I'm here in Hollywood. I'll be in the plaza lobby in five minutes. Hello, hello, Maggie. What? Oh, oh. Maggie. Johnny. Oh, you look awful. Oh, I told you. I took a sleeping tablet. Oh, it's a blockbuster. Oh, my eyelids feel like lead sash waves. Come here. Let's sit down over here. Okay. Better make it. Ooh, make it slappy. Well, when I missed at the library, I decided to do a little research on Sarah Deering. Well, good for you. Good well, they for have you. a wonderful Sarah Deering scrapbook with all her new photos and clippings. I, um... Uh, Borrow this. Hey. Hey, do these agonized eyes deceive me or the people in this photo? Read the caption, Johnny. Relaxing with Miss Sarah Deering beside her Hollywood swimming pool are the four lucky people to whom the motion picture star will someday leave her multi million dollar estate. They are left to right Miss Hilda Brower, her personal maid, Mr. Maddie Freeman, her agent, Neville Thomas, her current leading man. And Dan Cox, her attorney. Think of it, Johnny. Sheriff Cox, the man who insists her death was accidental, is one of her heirs. Well, I'm not the least surprised. Uh, I'll see you in the morning, Maggie. Well, Johnny, wait. Aren't you going to do something? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to point you toward the YWCA, then send a wire to my company. Well, wait quietly for an answer. Oh, no. Johnny Dollar. Ed Bruce, Johnny. Oh, hello. What time is it? I'm here. Six, where you are. Oh, no. Hey, I, I got your wire. What are you doing in Hollywood? Tried phoning you on Palmer last night. Where have you been? I'll explain later, Mr. Gross. Say, how, how about Sarah Deering's insurance? Anybody claim the 100000 yet? Yeah, got a registered letter yesterday. Mailed two days ago from the executor of her estate. Yeah? Who is he? A Palma man named Cox. Dan Cox. I checked out of the plaza, expense account item three, $12, and was halfway to Palma before I realized I'd forgotten to pick up Maggie Lacey. But I quieted my conscience by making a mental promise that she'd get an exclusive story on Hilda Brower's confession. At this point, confronted with all the information I had, I figured Hilda would be the easiest of the four heirs to break. I learned how wrong a guy can be when I pulled into the drive of Sarah Deering's villa and discovered I was expected. Come in, Mr. Dollar. Well, you do get around, Sheriff. Yes, you too, sir. Fortunately, your moves are fairly predictable. So you're here to see that I don't talk to Hilda again, hmm? Hilda is ill. She can't be disturbed. Let me read you a caption on an old newspaper photo. Relaxing with Miss Sarah Deering beside her Hollywood swimming pool are the four lucky people to whom the motion picture star will someday leave her multi-million dollar estate. They are left to right Hilda Brower, Maddie Freeman... Oh, you need to go on, Mr. Dollar. I see what you're driving at. You think the four of us murdered Miss Deering for her insurance? Well, it's the most logical theory to date, Sheriff. Mm. Especially since you happen to be the executor of the estate. Mr. Dollar, Sarah Deering was not murdered. However, I will admit that she did not die as a result of the fire. Oh? She was dead when the fire was started. Started? Who was the fire about? Hilda. She came home, found Miss Deering dead, an open bottle of sedatives beside the bed. Suicide? That's what Hilda thought. She must have gone out of her head with grief. She told me later that her only thought was to protect Miss Deering's name from the shame of a suicide's death. So she set the fire to destroy the evidence? Yes. And to circumvent the suicide clause in Sarah Deering's policy. What's that? Policy is not payable if the insured dies by her own hand, Sheriff. Your tone implies that I was unaware of that fact, Mr. Dollar. I'm not interested one way or the other. My job's finished. I'm reporting death by suicide to my company. You haven't heard the full story, Mr. Dollar. 
There's more. Sarah Daring was not a suicide. She just said she was. I said Hilda thought she was. Get to the point, Sheriff. After Matty Freeman and Neville Thomas paid Miss Deering their usual birthday visit, she had another caller. Oh. He's down the hall in the study. This way. Because of your skepticism, Mr. Dollar, I had to request the state police to get the man you're going to meet. While the hunt was going on, I knew you'd be tracking down Matty Freeman and Thomas, that you'd dig into Miss Deering's past, find things which would be misleading... Well, the maneuvering is over now. This gentleman can tell you the real truth about Sarah Deering's death. Mr. Dollar, this is Dr. James Harding. Oh, so you're Dollar, huh? That's right. Oh, you've caused a lot of trouble, Dollar. Broke up the first vacation I've had in ten years. I'm sorry, but there's a matter of $100,000. Please don't interrupt. Involved. I've got to be back in Beverly Hills by noon. Your patient's waiting. Well, then get to the point, Doctor. All right, all right. I've got a little hideout in the desert. That's where the state police found me. I was on my way there the day Sarah Deering died. I had to pass through Palmer, so I stopped off to see her. Dr. Harding was her physician, Mr. Dollar. And a very old friend. I was about seven when I drove up. I found her alone. She had a sudden attack. She was dying. Dying? Uh, Sarah Deering had been dying for years, Mr. Dollar. I won't go into the medical details. Suffice it to say, her courage couldn't hold off the inevitable any longer. As she was feeling fast in great pain. So you gave her the sedative? Yes. She died quietly. And uh, Jim came down to my office to report her death. I was out on a call. I didn't want to wait, so I filled out a death certificate, left it with a note on Dan's desk, and then drove on to my desert place. Meanwhile, Hilda returned home from the movies, found Miss Deering dead, and the bottle of sedatives Jim had forgotten. The rest you know, Mr. Dollar. Well, it's none of my affair or my company's. But uh, just for the record, why did you report Sarah Deering died as a result of the fire? If I'd reported the real truth, then I would have had the charge of very devoted servant and companion with arson. But Hilda did set the fire, Sheriff, and arson is a crime. Mr. Dollar, do you think Hilda committed a crime? Well, legally, yes, but morally, well, as I said, it's none of my affair, is it? Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye, Mr. Dollar. Expense account item number four, $5 to check out of the Palmer hotel room I never had the chance to use. Item five, $51.75, gas, oil, and rental on the convertible. Item number six, $150, plane fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $372.25. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar.